listen. These are sounds of warning. We rely on our hearing for sounds that warn and sounds that inform. Well, is considered one of the finest examples system from the west of light showers later this afternoon or evening. Today's high will be around 75 degrees. What did he say? Take away your hearing and you lose a primary source of information. Frustrating not to hear what someone is saying. But this is cheating, you say. We're taking away the sounds themselves, not your hearing. Right. Yet there are times when you cheat yourself. There are many occasions when the sounds are there and you still don't get much out of your listening unless you have good listening skills. We'll use silent film titles to indicate useful listening skills as we go. You want to know what we did in science class while you were out? We did an experiment to learn about different kinds of soil and how they hold water. Mr. Adams got two milk cartons. He cut away one side from each of them. That was so he could put samples of soil inside. Then, he punched several holes in the bottom, the same number of holes in each carton. The next thing is to get... Looks like Bill's attention is wandering. Right, you've got to pay attention. Well then, after he punched several holes in the bottom of each milk carton, he propped up both of the milk cartons at a slant. He arranged them so they are both inclined the same amount. Both inclined the same amount. Think about what is being said. Relate the ideas to other things you know. Next, he brought in two samples of soil, a bag of sand and a bag of loam. He filled one carton with sand and filled the other with loam. Then, he poured a cup of water at the upper end of each carton. Then, we waited to see how long it would take for the water to flow out of the bottom of the cartons. Respond to the person talking. Dig out additional facts and show him you're interested. How long did you have to wait? Only a few minutes before the water came through the sand. And how long before the water came through the loam? Well, we waited until the class was over, about half an hour, and no water dripped out. No water at all? No, the loam held it like a sponge. Pay attention. Think about what is being said. And respond to the person talking. These same skills are useful in other situations, as when you're with a group of people talking. We'll demonstrate once again. Did you read that poem for English? You mean, How They Brought the Good News from Gant to Aix? Yeah. The one by Robert Browning? Yeah. Didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, has anyone read it? I'd like to know what you thought about it. I read it, but I didn't get much out of it. It was hard for me to get the setting and the time straight. I think what bothered me is that the poem doesn't explain the purpose of the ride. That's true, yet I enjoyed the poem. I'm not sure why. Probably because it gave an excuse to do homework instead of washing dishes. Uh. <laughs> Mike's always making fun of studying, yet he's the biggest brain in class. He's trying to be a regular guy. I think it's that you get such a clear feeling of the action. Listen. I sprang to the stirrup, and Joris and he, I galloped, dirt galloped, we galloped all three. 
It gives the rhythm of horses. And into the midnight we galloped abreast. Not a word to each other, we kept the great pace. Neck by neck, stride by stride, never changing our place. You can almost see them riding from the rhythm of the poem. I agree. Definitely. The rhythm and sound get across the idea. I guess that's what we're supposed to get out of it. Yeah, Mrs. Hawthorne will be proud of us. <laughs> Another typical listening situation is the lecture. Let's see how the same listening skills apply. In England, during the early 1600s, men founded a religious group called the Separatists. These people had religious beliefs, which brought them into conflict with the established religion of England. To escape religious persecution, some of these people were forced to flee their native England. The captain of the Mayflower feared that the pilgrims might interfere with the running of his ship, and so he ordered his crew to make sure the passengers stayed below deck. Make sure the passengers stayed below deck. Over 30 of the passengers were children. In their gloomy surroundings, they had to be very resourceful in finding ways of passing the time. Sometimes their search for diversion led them into mischief, as when some boys tried to set fire to powder kegs. This was one of the few moments of excitement, and for it, the boys were punished. So they had to stay below deck all that time. I wonder how they lived through it. Many of the passengers became ill with scurvy. To help endure long weeks of living under difficult conditions, they often sought spiritual comfort by reading from their Bibles. After two long months of voyaging across the sea, they arrived at Cape Cod. Before going ashore, they met in the captain's cabin, where they wrote a document which became known as the Mayflower Compact. It was to become one of the great foundations of American democracy. In part, the Mayflower Compact reads, we, having undertaken a voyage to plant a colony, do solemnly in the presence of God and one another, combine ourselves together in a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation. Yes, Bill. You said that the Mayflower Compact was one of the foundations for American democracy. In what way? Are you getting the message? Pay attention. Think about what is being said and respond to the person talking. The skills we have demonstrated can be applied to most listening situations. Practice these points and you'll get more out of your listening. <laughs>